Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 26th August 2017. I am Sagar Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, India's nifty futures and few forex pairs using Q technical charts. We'll do the same thing for USA broad market ETFs, that is SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM, before going into broad market internal analysis and sector industry analysis using key graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the community posts and also look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me move to live system. Let's start with US oil. We are looking at USO, the US oil ETF using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. Last week, in the weekly market roundup, I had mentioned on this day that it was already late to take a go with flow long trade setup. On that day, which was Friday of one week ago, US oil went up strongly. We saw that using real time fine tune chart, one could enter a long trade as a day trade somewhere in the middle of that candle book some partial profit at the end of the day and could hold on to partial position, seeing if profit continues to run in the next week. However, we see that next week, starting from Monday, oil didn't move anywhere. It remained within the large candle of Friday of one week ago. Essentially, it moved sideways for last five days. Those who entered the early range breakout day trade Friday one week ago at a price level somewhere around this and booked half position or two third position at the end of the day, the remaining position could be stopped out if they used break even stop. If they had used initial stop position, then they are still in the trade. At the right edge of the chart, there is no standard Q trade setup. So we may wait for a proper setup to come before trying the next trade in USR. Let's look at gold. We are looking at gold using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. Last week, we mentioned that on this candle, there was a very profitable gap short day trade that was also taking advantage of the resistance created by the watermark resistance level and the memory resistance level. We can see that in this week for the last five days, GLD also essentially moved sideways. Interestingly, on Friday, gold came down significantly 
but recovered from the low. And we can see the low came to the memory support line. Again, this is another instance where using existence of memory support line, one could take a very profitable day trade using Q fine tune template. So we saw earlier we could take a day trade in the short direction on this yellow candle, seeing the existence of resistance watermark and memory line. And we saw the reverse of that on this Friday when price came to this price level at the memory support line, tried to go below that, but failed and went back up precisely at that point using Q fine tune chart, a very profitable and low risk day trade could be taken. Let us examine that day trade using fine tune chart. We first check what was the price level of the memory support. And we can see it was around 121.45. 121.4, With that information, we can now go to the fine tune template. We are now looking at GLD using fine tune template five minute interval. We can see that soon after market open, early range high and early range low formed. Price had actually opened above Thursday's high. This green line being Thursday's high and the blue line being Friday's open. So it opened with a small gap up, then early range high and low were formed. And then we see on this candle price dropped significantly. And when it came to the 121.45 level, we see that price bounced sharply from that level. If we were using five minute interval, then of course, we are not going to take a long trade on this candle because the candle color was still magenta. And we saw after that three successive five minute candles also had bearish traffic light candle color and the first bullish candle color came on this cyan candle. This also had a bull release signal. It already had exhaustion in terms of extreme and very high activity on several down candles and on the cyan bar, we had extreme high activity on the up candle. Using that information, one could enter a day trade long on this candle at the close of this five minute candle. However, after looking at the five minute chart, I see that I wouldn't have taken this day trade in the long direction. So what seemed plausible on the daily chart, when I drill down on the five minute chart, I see that at least for my liking, a long entered at this point, with a stop loss just below day's low was risking too much for a day trade. If I had a cyan candle, which was closing somewhere around 121.8 maybe, then I could have taken the long trade. But in this case, price went up sharply and this distance was too much for my style to risk for a long day trade. So I would not take a day trade, though it bounced from the memory support line, the risk was too much. Let's go back to the attic learns template. At the right edge of the chart, we see that price again closing just at the memory resistance line. It is inside kind of triangle pattern with resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom the weekly candle color and shape both are bullish 
However, it is also near watermark resistance in the weekly chart. So there is no standard Q trade setup at the right edge of GLD. We may wait for clearer signal before taking a trade. Let's move to India market. We'll use Metastock for that. Earlier, we could take a profitable short trade in Nifty futures in India on this magenta candle, and that hit the profit target. Then it tried to go to the value area and declined on this candle again. However, this magenta candle already closed very close to the memory support level. So we were not going to take any short trade at that point. After that, for a few days, Nifty futures went up. It is right at the value area. Overall, it seems to be tilting down at present. So if on Monday or Tuesday, it tilts down and gives us a magenta color candle in the daily chart, then we may have a go with flow short trade opportunity. However, there are multiple memory support lines nearby. These work pretty well in general. Most of the time, the support lines work very well. So one has to be careful and take a short trade only if the potential reward seems acceptable relative to potential risk. Right now at the right edge, there is no trade in Nifty futures. Let's look at Australian dollar. Australian dollar in the weekly chart went up strongly, came down a little bit, and then moving sideways, you can say on a closing basis, moving sideways in the weekly chart. If we look at the lows of the last two weekly candles, it seems to be going up. In the daily chart, we see that it is inside a triangle formed by resistance memory at the top, support memory at the bottom. It did go up strongly, came back to value area, tried to go back up, came down, now closed very close to the memory resistance line, maybe slightly above the memory resistance line. However, Friday's candle had an upper tail. If the upper tail was not there, then one could conclude that Friday gave a bullish sign. Also in the weekly chart, the candle color is still yellow, not cyan yet. Now on balance, looking at weekly and daily, we can say that it has more bullish indication than bearish indication. So for day trading purpose, one may take only long trades in Australian dollar. And if Monday it continues to go up, then there may be a swing long opportunity as well. We should wait to see if the weekly candle color turns cyan before taking a long swing trade in Australian dollar. Let's look at Sing dollar. Last week, we had mentioned that Sing dollar was moving sideways, tried to go down for two days, but both those candles had lower tail, then was moving sideways for multiple days. This week, we see that for four days, it moved essentially sideways. Then on Friday, it broke down heavily and came very close to the memory support line. Because it is very close to the memory support line, we are not going to try any short trade right now. And of course, the magenta color is bearish. It is moving with lower highs. So we are not going to take any long trade either. For day trading purpose, if we see that price is coming to one of the memory support lines and then bouncing up from there, then we may have very low risk, long day trade opportunity in Sing dollar. Let us also look at Australia's broad market index. I happen to have a look at that and it seemed interesting. This market, AXJO, the broad market index for Australia, is moving sideways for many, many weeks in the weekly backdrop chart. And we can see the same pattern playing out in the daily chart. 
it is as if the market is waiting for some indication to decide whether it will go up or go down we see that in the daily chart it is creating a triangle pattern formed by memory resistance at the top multiple memory support at the bottom if it breaks out in either direction then take a trade in the breakout direction if the breakout is sharp then in superior profit way we wait for price to pull back and then tilt up again before taking a trend following long trade or if the breakout on the down direction is too sharp we wait for it to come back up little bit and till down again giving us a low risk down trending trade at this moment this market is very non directional so i will guess that in general it will not be safe to take a directional trade in the australia market right now this looks very unusual in fact for an index to be moving sideways for so many weeks in fact several months starting from may and now we are at end of august it has effectively not moved anywhere let's now look at usa broad market etfs for that we will use trade station we are looking at spy using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side later on when going through the sector graph we will see that many more sectors went up this way than went down that seems to show that the whole market was very strongly bullish however when we look at the broad market etfs we see a more detailed view and that view doesn't show the same strength here we see that after the bearish headwind came in the weekly chart for three successive weeks it seems to be going down in the daily chart that same scenario is playing out as spy is creating lower highs and lower lows on friday it came to the value area and then tilted down with a bearish shape candle the traffic light candle color is still bullish however it is near three direction lines the fast standard as well as the slow yellow direction line on monday there are several possibilities if price comes to the memory resistance line and tilts down from there maybe it tries to break above that and comes down below the memory price level one may use q fine tune chart to take a very low risk day trade and if that day trade proves to be profitable meaning if spy closes low for the day then one may close partial position with profit and hold on to the remaining position seeing if the lower high lower low pattern continues in spy interestingly this week price tried to go up but after reaching the value area just moved sideways and the extent by which it went up in daily chart was not enough to change the backdrop candle color to neutral it remained bearish so we may anticipate a short trade monday or tuesday maybe from the memory level or if it falls right from the current price level it may give us a magenta candle that is also a go with flow short trade setup let's look at the other etfs we see for qqq the bearish headwind in the weekly chart could catch the high for four weeks now last week in the previous webinar we had mentioned that price was very close to the memory support in weekly but not there yet and this week we see price indeed touched the memory support in weekly and bounced up from there using that information probably some alert trader could take a profitable day trade however there was no swing long trade 
in the charts. Just like SPY, QQQ went up a little bit and then essentially moved sideways. It didn't go up enough to change the weekly backdrop color to neutral. It remained bearish, that is magenta. Prices also, just like SPY, it is near three direction lines. There are two possibilities again. It may go up to the memory resistance line until down from there, giving us a very low risk day trade short opportunity or it may till down from the current price level and if the candle color turns magenta it may give us a go with flow short opportunity right away if the go with flow short opportunity comes one needs to be careful because there are multiple memory support lines so before taking a short trade one may check if the reward risk ratio is acceptable. On the other hand, if price comes to the memory resistance and tilts down from there, then surely we'll have attractive reward risk ratio. So we may watch out for that. It is not uncommon for the bigger market players to show some excuse to open price higher. Usually it goes to some resistance level. We see there are resistance lines both in SPY and QQQ. So sometimes players may just bring price up to the resistance level, lure people to take a long trade and then bring price down. But we have these charts. We know these memory resistances work pretty well. So we will not be lured into taking a long trade. Instead, we may look for a short trade with very low risk entry opportunity. Let's look at Daya. Daya had been the strongest of the four USA broad market ETFs. It fell for three weeks, turning the weekly backdrop color magenta for three weeks. It has lower highs now. There is a memory resistance in Daya daily chart also. Price is again near value area. If it tilts down from the current price level, it will again give a go with flow short trade opportunity. However, in this case, the yellow line is nearby. That is the slow direction line, which can act as support. So it seems less bearish than QQQ and SPY. At the right edge right now, there is no trade signal. Let's look at IWM. IWM had been the weakest of the four USA broad market ETFs. We see this week it came to the very slow white direction line. It displayed a bullish headwind signal and price went up pretty nicely from there. We keep on seeing the usefulness of these headwind signals, memory signals, etc. Using the headwind signal and bullish shape of the candle, one could take a very low risk day trade on this day when price was bouncing up from the white direction line, book partial profit, maybe next day, and then hold on to the remaining position. This was no standard Q trade setup for a swing trade, but sometimes using the headwind signal an existence of major support level, like the white direction line in this case, day trades are possible and one could hold on to partial position of the day trade over next few days, trying to let profit run. At the right edge, price has come to the value area. Overall, it is in downtrend. And we see though it moved up for last five days, not moving sideways, which is different from SPY and QQQ. Still, the up move was not enough to change the backdrop candle color to neutral. It is still remaining magenta, that is bearish. So next week, if price tilts down from the current price level, that is value area, then it may give us a magenta candle and therefore a very low risk go with flow trend following short trend opportunity. 
Every week, we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ Composite Index on the left hand side weekly chart and NYSE Composite Index weekly chart on the right hand side. Because this analysis is using broad market indices and weekly charts, this is to be used only for long term investing decisions, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Just like as was in QQQ, we see that NASDAQ also displayed a bearish headwind and since then price is falling. This week price went up, however, the high of this week couldn't go above the high of previous week. So if we plotted it in a daily chart, we would probably see lower highs continuing. In case of NYSE also price went up this week, but high of this week couldn't go above the high of the previous week. If we look at NASDAQ and NYSE side by side, we can see that NASDAQ is now weaker than NYSE. Over longer period, using weekly chart, of course, both of these indices are in uptrend with higher lows and higher highs. It will take a while before the weekly charts turn into downtrend with lower high, lower low. We also look at three pairs of internals that is new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. The internals continue to be weak, not able to surpass previous peaks. We saw there was divergence few weeks ago and after that new high low for both NYSE and NASDAQ dropped. The lows of these new high lows were very deep, not seen in previous nine months. This week, the new high lows went up. However, it didn't surpass previous peaks. If next week they till down, then the new high lows will continue to make lower peaks. However, if we look at just this week's data, then we see that all the six internals went up and all of them ended positive, indicated by the cyan color. So in summary, we can say that the broad market indices continue to be bullish in the longer term weekly chart, internals continue to be weak and for this specific week, the internals are bullish. However, as we saw in the broad market ETFs, this up move only brought the ETFs to their value area and the weekly candles of SPY, DIA, QQQ remained bearish. So if we mix this broad market analysis and ETFs, we cannot say that the markets are bullish this week. At best, we can say that there is a mixed picture. When we combine the internals with the picture painted by the broad market ETFs. Let's look at the sector analysis. Every week we look at 11 sectors across three time periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. Yellow bar performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the yellow bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. This week we see that 10 of the 11 sectors gained apparently showing broad strength in the market. However, we already saw that the broad market ETFs only managed to go to the value area and SPY, QQQ and DIA, their weekly backdrop candle color remained bearish. So there is mixed signal at best we can again say that the market strength is neutral, neither bullish nor bearish. 
utilities is the only sector that is now up for all the three review periods. We have been observing the strength in successive market roundups. Utilities had been the strongest across last 12 months, last six months, last three months, etc. Whereas energy had been the weakest across last 12 months, six months, three months, etc. Though utilities sector is very strong, many utility stocks are now either at pendulum high or even starting to give bearish signal. So it may be too late to try to enter long trade in utility sector. Later on, we may use QH to find electric utility stocks that may give us potential short trade setup. After quite long time, energy is showing some sign of strength. This sector is up this week and the strength is also reflected in QH sector industry analysis. If we have time, we'll have a look at that later. Let's now look at industries with best performance for last five days. I cover some of the industries based on these graphs and also based on QH ranking analysis. We don't have time to cover every possible trade setups or all the detail of the industries. You may review them later after this session. But I try to highlight some of the facts that are apparent from the graph analysis as well as from rank and heat map analysis. We see that three of the retail sectors performed very well, apparel and accessories retailer, multi-line retailer, and general merchandise stores. In multi-line retail, DG, a discount store, had a trend following go with flow long trade this week. Let's look at DG using Q charts. We see that from this low, DG went up and hit the upper boundary line. Then there was a bearish headwind signal, price dropped somewhat, came to the value area. And in this case, it came and hit an area where all the four direction lines were together and price tried to go below them, but went back up. On this candle, the cyan candle, price went above all the four direction lines and gave us a go with flow long trade setup. Stop loss will be just below the recent low. Price target will be at the upper boundary level. We also see there was a memory resistance at that price level. We keep seeing that memory resistance works quite well. And in this case, there was also multiple top and also watermark resistance line in the weekly chart. So we would put our GTC profit taking order at this price level, which was hit on Thursday. So at least partial position would be booked. On Friday, we see that it had given a cyan color candle again. However, we are active trader. So we would like to catch the trade at the lowest price point possible. Entering trade on this cyan candle will give us lower risk. And if we now enter the trade, then we are buying the stock at a slightly higher price. Our risk will increase, our potential profit will reduce. That is not our approach. So we would prefer to enter the trade when the go with flow long signal came the first time without second guessing. So if we were watching QH on a daily basis, then we could probably see that this industry was strengthening when the go with flow long signal came and we could take the long trade more confidently. 
in another retail industry apparel and accessories retailers bke had a box long trade this week and we can see that using q decision chart let's have a look at this stock bke we are looking at bke using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and now we are using daily decision template on the right hand side for box trade setup we look for a stock to go down hit a major support level in this case we see that price came to the quarterly pivot level it fell down heavily with many heavy activity days there was earnings so we would not be taking any trade before that but we see that on this candle we had a bullish shape candle we had a bull release signal and there was exertion already price was going up from a support level and if the weekly had turned neutral by that time then at the close of this candle we had a box long trade setup this is a very fast trade setup stop is just below recent low and profit is booked near value area or once the risk resistance is covered and we can see that by friday more than risk resistance was covered and at least partial profit will be booked there is a memory resistance line in the weekly chart nearby which is probably also this level or somewhere around that in the daily chart so keeping the memory resistance line in view one will additionally make sure to book profit on friday however it seems to be quite bullish for now so partial position could be held as i explained in the last class my preference is to close two third of the position in such cases and leave one third with initial stop loss if we leave partial position with the break even stop it is more likely to be hit and often after hitting the break even point which is the long entry price the stock tends to move up again so leaving partial position with initial stop loss tends to work out better in such circumstances again if we were looking at the industry strength on a regular basis using qh then we could find bke as giving a box trade setup and take the long trade more confidently many stocks in the apparel accessories industry went up strongly on friday as seen from qh industry stocks drill down using q real time sonar very profitable early range breakout long day trade could be taken on gco on friday that is another advantage of using q edge we can see on a daily basis which of the industries are performing best and once we do that we could drill down to the stocks put the stocks in q sonar or on q charts and if we see that a stock is strong from the early morning if we see that stocks industry is also strong from the early morning then we can anticipate that they will remain strong throughout the day so when a day trade opportunity comes we are able to take them more confidently there are multiple ways of identifying such day trades one that i shared earlier is to look at the broad market indices using metastock zenith and see which stocks are performing best if there is a similarity among the stocks that is say multiple banking stocks are strong from the early morning then we may use q fine tune chart to look for long day trade in banking stocks if we did that on friday then we will see that apparel accessories retailers were going up strongly and using q fine tune chart we would be able to take very profitable trades let's have a look at q edge and then see how it was changing from weakness to strength across multiple time periods 
every time we open q edge industry analyst tool it analyzes 255 industry groups across 12 monthly periods and then more frequently for recent periods across 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 days assigns rank depending on their performance rank 1 assigned to the best performing industries 255 to the worst performing industry and then also applies a heat map cyan to the strongest magenta to the weakest and a color gradient to all the industries in between once we open it, we can click this button to copy the data into industry work area where we may sort it, slice or dice it. If we sort it on one day from smallest to largest, then we can see that these are the industries that were performing very well on Friday. Apparel and accessories catches the eye especially because it was weak for many many months and we see over 10 days it had a rank of 226 very poor rank we can see also from the magenta color but over five days it had improved a lot going to rank five only over two days it had one rank over one day also it had a very good rank nine so if we put cursor anywhere on the row click on this components button then we can see the stocks some of the stocks in that industry that will come in the industry stocks tab and we could plot some of them on q sonar or on q charts to see if there was a potential day trade and gco is one of the stocks that was brought from this drill down let's look at gco through q charts here we are looking at gco through the weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side daily hop on chart on the right hand side interestingly i see that there is a bullish headwind sign in the weekly chart that may signal a possible reversal and we see that though the broad market ETFs didn't move much and broad market ETFs are at very high level, this stock is opposite to that. It is at very low level. In fact, pendulum low. I can see that because the stretch release signal is coming in cyan color, not in green color. And it moved up strongly for several days and the Friday was a very big move up. Friday it went up by 10%. So we saw from QH that this industry was performing well. If we plotted these stocks in Q sonar, we could see that GCO was one of the best performers from early morning. And therefore, we could keep an eye on this stock using fine-tuned real-time chart. And that would give us a very profitable long trade we see that soon after market open, early range low and early range high were formed. On this candle, price went above early range high. So that gave us a long trade, early range breakout setup. Our stop will be just below early range low. That stop was never approached. We see that the pause line was hit after some time. So we could book partial profit at that time. And then at the end of the day, we could either book full profit or looking at the strength of the stock and also strength of the industry could hold on to partial position. This is one way that we can use industry analysis to initiate a day trade. And if it happens to catch the very bottom, then we will be very happy. We will end up getting a very profitable long trade, swing trade, or maybe sometimes even a longer term investment. Remember, this industry was weak for a very long time and now showing signs of strength, which is very apparent from this row in the QH industry analyst. So we saw that using the QH, we could take a long trade in DG, swing trade, 
we see that there was also a long trade in BKE and a possible day trade in GCO. What about possible trades for the coming weeks? Cores may give us a go with flow long trade opportunity. We will look at that using Q charts and we'll also look at cores using Q vital. We'll see that its fundamentals are quite attractive. Industry is already strong, we can see. So we are combining the industry analysis from this graph and also from QH ranking table. We are combining the fundamentals from Q vital and also the technical signals from Q global. So let's look at this chart, course, K O R S. We are looking at course using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. We see in the weekly chart, it was going down for a long time, then moved sideways somewhat higher high. And on this candle, it had a very strongly bullish move upward. Earnings was in this week, there was a very big gap up after earnings. So just before earnings, we saw that price broke out of the narrow range, but we don't like to take a long position just before earnings. We never know whether it will go up or down. So we'll let this breakout pass. We are not going to take any trade at this point, even though we can see that activity was already starting to be bullish and high at the point of the breakout. But looking at the earnings coming out next day, we are not going to take a long trade. That is our usual strategy. Somebody could probably take an option straight, but the call options are very expensive just before earnings. In my experience, it's not very useful over longer term to trade with call options just before earnings. See what happened after that, as is quite common, after earnings, it comes down, but doesn't come down too much if the stock is strong. At the right edge, we see that it has turned green again, the candle traffic light in the daily chart, the relative performance has tilted up. It had a long tail, upper tail on Friday. So we were not going to take any long position on Friday. But next week, if it goes up, we already have higher high and higher low. So it may give us a go with flow long trade setup. Stop will be just below recent low. So the stop loss will be narrow. We may book partial profit at the upper boundary and continue to hold the remaining position if it goes up. We see the weekly candle color has remained bullish. That is cyan, though in the daily chart, there was a price drop. So that allows us to take a go with flow long trade. So it's industry was weak, starting to gather strength. This stock was also weak, starting to gather strength. And let's look at its fundamentals now. For Q Vital, we can enter the root stock either in the scorecard page or in the input page. In this case, I'm entering in the scorecard page directly. Many times we may just look at the scorecard page and only if required drill down for more information in the other pages. So we have got Michael Kors, an apparel retailer. We have got its peers. We can click the calculator button to calculate the fundamental scores. And we can see instantly from the color coding that course earnings quality is very high. We can just look at the color. Blue color means attractive or green color means attractive. Relative value score is the best possible score of 100. Internal value is medium. And there is also a potential for short squeeze. So there are multiple signals that are attractive for a long position. Valuation overall looks good. Short squeeze potential is there. There is no dividend, but we see that growth is also quite good. Just by looking at the green color across the EPS growth and revenue growth columns, we see that Michael Kors has one of the best growth in the industry. So we may look for a potential long trade for Michael Kors next week. Let's look at the worst performing industries of this week. 
we can see four of the worst performers relate to food products. Their QH ranks were weak for quite long time. So if QH ranking was weak for long time, we could have taken short trade long time ago, at least in some of the stocks. BGS was one of them. It declined heavily after showing a weekly bearish signal. That's why we are always watchful for memory resistance, headwind signal, traffic light signal, etc. That bearish headwind came in August 16, and that has been pointed to the exact top. So let's look at food products through QH ranking table to see how it was strengthening or weakening, and then we will look at the stock BGS to see how the headwind signal could catch the very top. So in the industry age, we can just filter for food. And we can see that several of the food related industries, they are already magenta for many, many review periods. In fact, some are starting to turn cyan, at least one of them food distributor. So the optimal point to enter short in some of them has already passed. Still, if we are looking for swing trade, then for any industry that is magenta over five day period, that is one week period, our aim is to take only short trade in those stocks, in the industries. And if some industry is cyan over five day period, then we are looking for only long trades for swing trading. Now, if we did this analysis earlier, then we could have caught this stock BGS when it was showing the bearish headwind in weekly. Let's look at the stock chart. We see that in the weekly backdrop chart, there was earnings in this week and next week it displayed a bearish headwind signal. Our trade setups are not based on weekly chart, but when the bearish headwind appears in weekly chart, we are careful about entering long position. So if we followed the daily chart around that time, then almost certainly there were multiple short entry opportunities in the daily chart. Why I came to this chart is to show that the bearish headwind signal could catch the very top and at minimum, one would be very careful about holding any long position at that time. It would be better to book profit or at least tighten stop at that time. And when we combine these technical signals with the fact that the industry was also weakening at that time, we'll be even more cautious about the long positions. Looking at few more stocks in the food related industry, we see that HAIN and MDLZ gave go with flow short trade in recent weeks. HAIN was overvalued as seen from QVITA. Let's look at these charts, HAIN and MDLZ. Remember, we saw that their QH ranking was magenta, bearish. So we were only going to take short swing trades. And if we were running sonar regularly, then we could catch these two profitable short trades, HAIN and MDLZ. Let's look at them. Here, look, we are looking at HAIN using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side, open template on the right hand side. So we can immediately see that on this day, price already had a lower high. We can say that it had a lower low. So on this magenta candle, we could take a go with flow short trade with a very narrow risk. This would be the entry price. Profit target will be the lower boundary, which was hit on Thursday, or we could have booked some profit on this candle as well. So again, we are only trading in the direction of the industry. Thereby, we are aligning more and more edges to our trade. Let's look at the other stock which also gave a profitable short trade, that is MDLZ. 
MDLC. And here we can see that price tried to go up here. It was an indecisive candle. Next day it fell down very sharply. The shape was very bearish and the candle color also was bearish, but it was still moving sideways. So probably we were not going to take any short trade on this candle. Then price tried to go up, came right to the value area and came down again. So this magenta candle would be an optimal position to take a short trade with stop loss just below recent high. And the reward risk ratio was very attractive. In one day it hit the profit target. So partial profit will be booked. In this case, we see the industry was weak. We see there is no nearby support immediately in the weekly or daily chart. So there would be no reason to book full profit. Again, as my preference is two third of the position could be booked and one third of the position could be left with initial stop loss. As price is continuing to move down, we can hold on to the trade and probably use trailing stop after some time to let profit run. I also saw HAIN was overvalued. So let's look at Q Vital. And we'll see when doing the peer analysis of HAIN that BUFF is also overvalued currently. And then we look at the same BUFF using Q charts to see that there may be a potential short in the coming days. Also, especially if the industry continues to remain weak. So let's go to Q Vital first and check the fundamentals for HAIN. So once we get hand celestial groups PRs and it's Q vital, instantly we can see from the color coding that its relative value is very weak. Just see the color magenta, we can see internal value is also very weak. And there is no growth information for EPS or revenue both. So fundamentally it was weak, industry was weak. The technical chart gave a go with flow short signal those are the trades we like to take where we are aligning all the edges. And when I did this analysis using Q Vital, I always look for the weakest stocks because now I am looking at stocks where the industry is weakening. And instantly Buff caught my eye. It has one of the weakest possible relative value and internal value score. And again, it has no growth in earnings or revenue. Doesn't pay any dividend also. So I looked at buff through technical charts then. Let's have a look at that. Okay, here let me change the daily template to hop on advanced so I can see the watermark levels. I can use the hotkey control shift A. We can see that it was moving downward in the weekly chart. Then on earnings in this week, it went up strongly. We see the same thing in daily chart. It created a triple bottom. And then on earnings, it had a big gap up day. It had an indecisive candle. Then it came down and then went up again. After it broke above the high of the earnings day, it continued to go up and it has remained overbought for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days now. That's for two successive weeks, ten trading days. It has remained overbought. At the right edge, we see that it hit the watermark level in the weekly chart. For many months, it has not been able to go above that price. That is from the beginning of 2017, January 2017. It is at that very high price level. It is very overvalued. We saw that already from fundamentals also. In technical charts, we see that it is at a major resistance level over what for many days. And it has tilted down, but it has not given a bear release signal yet. If it gives a bear release signal in the coming week, 
and that gives us an acceptable reward risk ratio, then we may take a very low risk box short trade. Again, that would be aligning the weakness of the industry, the overvaluation of the stock with the tilting down of the stock in technical charts from very high price level. Let's now look at the biggest rank improving and biggest rank declining industries. We saw in the sector graph that energy improved strength this week. Here we saw that energy sector went up this week, but for many periods it was going down. In addition to best performing industries, we study the biggest rank improvers because often the biggest rank improvers end up being one of the best performers in subsequent weeks. We see that happening over and over again, not always, but often. So we do this study and we see oil and gas drilling is one of the industries that had biggest rank improvement. In fact, if we look at QH, we'll see several oil related industries turned up this week. Let's have a look at QH. In QH, we can just filter for oil. And we can see all the oil industries were very weak for a long time, up to 10 day period. And over five day period, several of them has gained strength considerably and oil and gas drilling has gained strength most. Over five days, its rank is now only seven. The other one is oil and gas storage and transportation. However, oil and gas storage and transportation didn't continue the strength over two days and one day period. Whereas oil and gas drilling has continued to hold on to its strength. So again, I can drill down by clicking on this button and some of the stocks in oil and gas drilling will be brought up here. I found RDC from here and I like to check the fundamental also. It takes only a few minutes. So let's look at RDC's fundamental. Get its peers and get the fundamental scorecard. Instantly we can see that its earning quality is very high, relative value is very good also. And there is a very high potential of short squeeze. And instantly we also see in this peer list, it has the best growth, one of the best. I think ATW is another one with very good growth, but ATW's valuation is not so attractive because relative value is pretty weak. So RDC immediately caught my eye as a good balance between attractive valuation, potential short squeeze, and also good growth in this PR group. So I looked at RDC through Q charts. And interestingly, we see there are multiple bullish headwinds. After the last bullish headwind, price did go up enough to give us profitable swing trades in the daily chart. Now another bullish headwind has come price closed just below the watermark level in the weekly chart. If it had gone above the watermark level, it would be more bullish. Then I see there was a bullish headwind in the daily chart. After that price went up enough to give us profitable swing long term. In fact, this bullish headwind day also created a false downside breakout. So we could have taken a long trade there. Now we are at the right edge. We have to make decision at the right edge. We saw that this industry was weak for a long time, gained strength over five days, held on to that strength over two days and one day period. And in daily chart, if it tilts down a little bit and goes up, that will be most optimal point to take a long position with stop just below that low and target at the declining yellow line and the memory resistance line. What if price goes up from here on Monday? We see that on Friday, it was actually a gap up day. So if this is a gap up day, 
one way of entering the trade it's not a standard q trade setup but one way to take advantage of the gap up is that if it goes up on monday using q fine tune chart maybe a early range breakout entry in the long direction we could take a long trade and put a stop below early range low or below the low of this candle below the low of the friday candle in this case we will not take a swing trade putting a stop below the recent low because it was a gap up day on friday and we are of course combining the information of the industry as well as the fundamental information if it was a decision to be made just by looking at this technical chart then i will not suggest taking any long trade at all but the industry is strengthening we can see the industry strength in real time on monday tuesday if the industry continues to be strong then there may be a potential trade and if the industry continues to be strong this may not pull back but if it pulls back to the watermark level or nearby until that is of course an optimal setup to take a very low risk long position so i identified one stock rdc in oil and gas industry but there are multiple industries in oil and gas that may be strengthening you may keep an eye on that which is apparel accessories retailers apparel accessory luxury goods also strengthen and we already saw several stocks from this industry while looking at the best performing industries let's look at the industries with biggest rank decline distillers and hipners declined in rank stz is somewhat overvalued as seen from q vital it is moving sideways in q global charts it is at pendulum high which is a very high price level and is overbought even in weekly in weekly in daily i have to say at the same time weekly backdrop color has changed to bearish magenta so we may wait for a suitable short signal in the daily q hopon chart in the coming week let's look at stz using q vital to check its fundamentals and then we we'll look at the stock if we look at the other industries that declined rank we see two of them are related to semiconductor semiconductors had been strong for very long but weakening in recent periods before going to stz let me look at q edge and filter for semiconductors once we filter for semiconductors instantly we can see just from color coding it was strong for long time but in recent period five day period it has declined significantly and the weakness is continuing over two day and one day period the decline might have started from 3 months ago so i tried to drill down into some of the stocks or semiconductor equipment testing semiconductor etc i see that some of the stocks have already declined and at some kind of support maybe watermark support or memory support or moving sideways i couldn't find very good short opportunities right now so we may wait for that meanwhile if we look at distillers and vintners we can see that it was strong for long time over 5 days it declined in rank but improved over 2 days and 1 days if it declines next week or so then we may have very profitable short trades catching the very top so again i clicked on this and looked at some of the stocks stz was one of them constellation brands so i looked at it using q vital now we look at stz from the color coding we can see that internal value is medium the relative value is weak so it is already overvalued in terms of growth it actually has quite good growth relative to the peers so it's not a weak stock in terms of fundamentals but it is already overvalued there is some short interest so not the biggest the biggest short interest is in rox if we want to know the exact percentages we can go to the fundamental tab we can see stz has 2% 2.15% short interest rox has higher short interest its valuation is medium yellow 
in terms of EV with the PE valuation. We don't need to look at PBR for non-financial companies, but in terms of EV with the and PE, we see that its valuation is medium. So fundamentally, we cannot say it is very weak because growth is very good. Still, when I look at the technical charts, I see that there was a bearish headwind in the daily chart. Since then, price is not able to go up. It is moving essentially sideways in the weekly chart. And though price tried to go up a little bit in the daily chart, we see that for five weeks now, the backdrop candle color has remained bearish. So this was earnings week after that price didn't go much higher. This was the earnings gap up day. Since then, price couldn't really go up. So it is moving sideways. The industry had very big rank decline. The stock is fundamentally strong. Still, if it tilts down, it may give us a very low risk short entry opportunity. I would be happier if its growth was weak, but that is not the case. But still, we can take a technical chart and combine that with the industry's weakness to take a short trend. We may keep an eye on this. That was an analysis of broad market sector and industry using graphs. We also use the ranking table. While looking at the sector performance, I mentioned that utilities is now up for one month. However, several stocks are at very high level may actually give potential short. How I thought of that is again using QH. Let's filter for the utilities industries. Instantly from color coding, we can see that for many months, it had been one of the strongest. Over five days, some of them, at least electric utilities and water and related utilities decline. For electric utilities, it is continuing to be weak over two days and one day period. So we could drill down. It has found many stocks. So what I do, if there are many stocks, I can simply copy them. If I'm using Metastock, I will copy the first column, which has the Thomson Reuters symbol. If I'm using TradeStation, I can copy the last column, which has the ticker symbol. And let me open Q Elite Sonar. That's the dashboard for TradeStation Q Elite. And I can simply paste all the symbols. So it will take few seconds and I can do it every day to see if there is a potential short opportunity. This industry was very strong for a long time and now maybe, maybe showing sign of weakness. I go back to key edge. It is just starting to show some magenta color. That's why I'm saying it may be showing some sign of weakness. So when I drill down to the electric utility stocks, EE was one that came to my notice. Let's look at EE. EE, this stock is now overbought for a long time and it is at the watermark resistance level in the weekly chart. That is the same level where a bearish headwind came earlier, which could catch the top. From there, price fell nicely. So when price comes to this previous top level, which was identified by bearish headwind, there is a higher likelihood, not certain, but there is a higher likelihood that some selling is still left and price may till down, at least just enough to give us a profitable swing short trade. And if we are lucky, we may end up holding it for the longer period. But price is right at the watermark level. We see that on Friday, price tried to go above that, but close just below it. There is no bear release signal. If there is a bear release signal coming on Monday, price tilting down, then one may take a very low risk short trade. Now, if on Monday price tilts down from this price level, it is unlikely that the weekly will change color to yellow. So in this case, it will be a discretionary trade. It will not meet all the requirements of the box trade setups unambiguous checklist because box trade setup needs the weekly candle color to be yellow.
that will not happen most likely if price tilts down on monday but we may still take a technical trend using daily chart and we may also use the real time fine tune chart that will give us a even lower risk because it is not meeting all the requirements of box trade setup that is the weekly candle is not yellow yet i will suggest taking such a short trade only if we see that the industry is continuing to weaken on monday or next week which we can find from qh also saw a few more stocks i think nrg it's an utility company also electric utility and if we were watching the industry ranking using key wage on a daily basis then we would see that it was already weakening this week and on this candle three days ago it had a very nice q box trade setup and it was meeting all the requirements ee we just saw that stock there the weekly candle color is still cyan whereas for energy we already had weekly candle color neutral for several weeks so when we had this bear release signal three days ago accompanied by high activity it was at a watermark level price tried to go up and came down that's a false breakout we had met all the requirements of the box short trade setup so it was a very low risk trade on this candle by friday we had already covered more than the risk distance again as is my preference in such case we could book two third of the position leave initial stop for the one third of the position even if price goes up tilts down we'll have very high profit if it goes up and stops us out on the one third of the position we'll still have some profit and if the industry weakens on the weekly chart also it drops then we'll have the opportunity to catch the very top of a stock just when the industry was starting to weaken there may be other stocks in this industry that are getting ready for short trade or has already given a short trade i think mge -E was another one see this is the third stock in electric utilities the first one ee -E, we saw the weekly is still cyan the second one gave us a box short trade setup we saw the weekly has already turned neutral and the third one mgee -E, mge energy we see the weekly has already turned magenta for several weeks on this candle we already had a potential go with flow short trade and we see that on friday as of friday we again have a potential go with flow short trade the stop loss will be just above recent high entry point will be friday's close and if price comes near the memory support line we will book profit so it gives us reasonable reward risk ratio these are all the stocks that i wanted to cover let's look at q edge one more time clear the filter so we can look for potential swing long shot as well as long term investment long shot for swing trade long we are going to sort q edge across five days smallest to largest and for the cyan color industries we are going to look for only swing long trade for the magenta color industries we are only going to look for swing short trade and for industries that were cyan for long time and now turning magenta across five day period in this case renewable energy then we may look for not only swing but potentially long term short trades same is true for independent power producers energy traders it may be similar to the electric utilities industry we saw if we sort it from smallest to largest then we may look for swing as well as longer term long in marine freight and logistics we see it was weak for long time over five days it gained strength considerably 
Similarly, oil and gas storage and transportation. We saw that from the graph also. If some industry is spotty, magenta, then cyan, then magenta, then those can give swing opportunity, but maybe moving somewhat sideways or up down, that is giving rise to magenta, cyan, magenta pattern. That is how we can use Q edge and using the desktop version, we can check the industry strength, weakness, ranking, bitmap color changing in real time or at least at the end of the day and make decision based on that. Because this is industry analysis, I don't suggest looking at it every minute and making trade decisions based on that. My preferred way is to look at five day period. Sometimes I look at one day period, trying to catch the very top or bottom of an industry's turning point. Okay, let's look at one stock that and David sent Foot Locker. It is already down a lot. And in fact, its fundamentals were quite good in terms of valuation, not in terms of growth. And when it was bouncing up from this watermark level, I actually took a long position. It had some profit. However, this was earnings. As I keep on saying, holding on to a trade across earnings is speculative, another nice way of saying it's gambling. One way person could trade is take a long position on this candle. Maybe there was a box long trade set up, book some profit, with some of the money one could buy a call option. Of course the call option will be worthless after this drop, but at least he will not lose money. In my style, I am very reluctant to hold on to a stock across earnings, unless it is for long-term investment. So at the right edge, there is no Q trade setup. It has declined a lot. So I'm not going to take a long trade right now. If we look at fundamentals, I think it will look quite good in terms of valuation. Its valuation is quite good. Earnings quality is good. It's a shoe store, big company actually. Build value, internal value, both are good. There is a potential short squeeze. The growth is also not bad. It's actually one of the best in the group. In fact, in this industry group, you can find several companies that dropped a lot. Course is also one related company. We saw course went up sharply after earnings, whereas Foot Locker dropped. That's why it's better to wait and not take a trade just before earnings. Now course may give us a go if a long trade. Foot Locker dropped after earnings. So because it dropped, it has an even better valuation now. But there is no Q long trade setup right now. So we are not going to take any long trade. If you look at some of the posts in the community, we can see I posted one trade. I actually shared it last week in the class. Let me quickly go through it is the last stock that we look at. That was a Singapore company. When I shared the trade and I discussed it in the last class, the chart looked like this. It fell down a lot. We had a bull release signal in the weekly chart. Candle color was neutral in weekly. In daily, we had exhaustion, multiple heavy activity days. As of the last candle on the right side in the daily chart, we had extreme high activity and the price went up. The candle was very bullish shape and bullish color. So this met all the requirements of box long trade setup. But there was no visible support. Sometimes the support may exist in the decision template. So I explained that it was already near multiple quarterly pivot levels. So I took a long trade in this stock because there were memory resistance lines around 0 0.49. If we extend it 0 0.49 something. So my stock would be just below recent low target will be around 0.49. And after a few days, I think as of Friday, it actually hit the memory resistance line. By that time it had hit my profit target. It was more than the risk distance. So I booked partial profit. It closed with a very bullish shape candle. However, 
in my experience it doesn't pay to hold on to a profitable position when it is at memory resistance it is already hitting my profit target in such cases i always make sure to book some profit and can leave partial position no issue but at least partial profit can be booked so this was a profitable trade by the way there is a special session coming that is arranged by meta stock 31st 6 to 7 pm where i will look at different ways of using q edge and q vital it's only one hour session you may go to education live class register for that and afterwards metastock some people from metastock may be visiting singapore end of september because i am resident of singapore they invited me to have a, a maybe one or two hour presentation in front of the audience there i'll do that but at least this 31st there is a meeting where i'll not go through the industry sector analysis graphs but only use q global q vital and q edge that is all that i plan to share in today's session thanks for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably